All right, well, so step one of building on the fuselage, which is what we're working on now, is cutting, ah, windy, is cutting a piece of angle aluminum, this three quarters by three quarters angle aluminum, which is the 63 by three quarters by three quarters to the dimensions given. Problem is, I don't know which one angle aluminum I'm supposed to use. I have a whole bunch of this stuff. Now, three quarters by three quarters is easy, right? That's, you know, three quarters of an inch this way by three quarters of an inch this way. The 063 is thickness, and this is, this is the 063. So this is the right stuff. But is this piece meant for something else? I don't know. Um, I have several different runs of this stuff. This is the only one that's by itself though. All the others are over there are in pairs. So I think I'm supposed to use this really long one. Here's the thing. If this really long one is the wrong one and I cut it, but I need this long one later, well, that's the wrong one. And now I can't make this longer. So instead, I find it's a better idea to use one of the shorter ones, even though those are in pairs and those are probably meant to both be used for something. If I use one of those up, I can always cut this one if, the, if it was meant to be this one to that longer or to that shorter length. So use, the, the moral of that is use the shorter lengths first, then use the longer ones. And if nothing else, I can always order another one of these, which I've had to do before. See, here I have two of these guys that is the same aluminum, just this is shorter. Well, if for whatever reason, if this long piece is meant to be used somewhere and I, and I cut this one up, or if I, if I cut this one up, suddenly it'll be too short, right? But if I cut this one up and I was meant to have cut this one for this, I can always cut this longer one into this. So use the shorter one first. Roundabout way of getting there. So even though, like I said, I've got two of them that are identical that kind of implies to me that these two were meant for something specific but I, I was looking and i didn't see it so maybe this is why you should always look ahead always read ahead thing is is the uh these plans are so thick they're i mean you know it's an inch, inch thick of paper here for these plans to know which part or piece you're supposed to use where Sometimes I can't find it. So I think I'm going to go ahead and, like I said, use this guy. And I can always either cut or buy new ones if I need to. All right. So looking at this, it looks like it wants us to create one or two create two. So we're going to be cutting this twice. Two. These are going to be F 104 ends, stiffener angles from that figure one. So five and five eighths. So five <clears throat> and five eighths. So here. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one, two, three, four, five. So right there. All right, so that's that's one. Let's do it down here too, just to make sure. All right, let's go cut some metal. And with that, Step one of the fuselage is complete. All right, so now we're moving on to step two. Step two is all about making a center line on each of these little guys. Now, these is the F1004N stiffeners. There are two of them. I'm not sure where they're used yet. Looks like they're used. Doo, 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 doo. Looks like they're used on the big center assembly. That'll be interesting. Um, I'm going to mark the middle section on here and then I'm going to label these as the F104 stiffeners. 
Uh, and yeah. So this is how I hope to do filming from now on. Uh, I want to make you guys as much a part of it as possible. I realize in the past a lot of what was going on was me working in the background while I was talking over it. And I'm still going to do a lot of that, but I want to try to be more inclusive. To that end, I'm going to be getting like a head mount display so that I can be filming and actually like there's going to be a camera on me for B-roll, but there's also going to be like a, a eye view so you can see what I'm filming. Uh, I'm going to set up this camera so that I can actually see myself as well so I can kind of get an idea because there have been a few times when I was filming where I, I, it looked awful because there was, n there was no way for me to preview and I couldn't just look at the like a viewfinder or whatever. These little GoPros... They don't have a screen on them. I mean, they might have a screen on the back if you get a certain one, but this one, this is just a hero, so it doesn't have that at all. Uh, so I've got my phone set up. It's broadcasting Wi-Fi to my phone, and I want to set up like a whole rig or jig that'll hold it all for me so that I can always easily see what's going on. thought about getting several more of these cameras, actually, uh, just so that I have a, a whole multitude of them around filming so I can catch all the stuff and cut it up and we'll be able to see stuff. And that goes back to the whole 3D, 360 camera, too. I still want to get one of those just for funsies. Um, but if for, no, if for no other reason, then I, th I think having, uh, I was thinking about this uh, the other day, having a boom, like on the back of the, the fuselage, right? Having a boom that sticks way up and it's a 360 camera. So, and that would be fun, fun stuff for filming later on once the plane is done uh, and really simple to rig up too. Uh, that would be awesome to be able to just fly down, you know, fly down towards some airport or something like that and you have this 360 view that people can look around and what's really cool almost almost like I think of a, a like an uber not an uber I'm sorry like a, the the google the google street view car thing that has the, the stock right well uh that'd be pretty cool on an airplane um I don't know how aerodynamic that would be but it would be interesting if nothing else you have to reinforce that or else it come off mid-flight but anyways, that's way down the road, but it'd be fun to do. So anyways, I can ramble on forever. Back to it. Time to continue working on the fuselage. Going to get more stuff. Going to make this stuff easier for you guys to watch because I love you guys. You guys are keeping me motivated. And ultimately, I do want to make this a learning experience for everybody. And I want it to be kind of a conversation. So um, in the past, you guys have asked questions and I've tried to answer them as best I could. Sometimes I'm a little remiss. Sorry. Uh, there's just, there's a lot. So anyways... Ugh, I can ramble forever. Back to it. These have been literally sitting. These parts, these center parts. This is the the center bulkhead section that goes between the wings. These have been sitting underneath my wings for like two years, so they're dusty. Um, so I'm going through and wiping all the crap off them. Um, just spider webs and everything else. If you ever ever own a hangar, the uh, the amount of critters that get in here is crazy. Um, and and like when you open your hang, well, open the hangar up, and you just see all the critters flee, and usually into the hangar, not out. Um, all right, so the next step, so this is step three, is to take our brackets that we've created and to mount them uh, underneath here along these holes and along this edge. This these are this is a stiffening system. Uh, I need a good way to clamp these between this piece, this anodized piece uh, on either side of it. And it's just kind of awkward. I don't really have one. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to line it up and then I'm going to draw um, using my permanent marker here through these number 30 holes and then just draw a line across the top of this piece, which will allow me then to drill a hole at either end. And then I'll just use Clecos to Cleco the thing in place. And at that point we can do the match drilling, which I believe is the next, the whole point of this. Yeah, step three is just the clamping. Make sure you have the right part and the right parts and then clamp it all together. And then step four is match drill and click of the holes common to both the stiffener angle and the center section bulkhead using the center section bulkhead as a drill guide. So basically, and yeah, do this for the remaining. So yeah, that's exactly what they want you to do. So let's do that. Get under there. So let's line that sucker up and make sure a little circle, circle, a little circle, circle. Let's 
so yeah. And so I can see I put holes that match up with these holes, so this piece will go right back there as soon as I drill a hole. And I'll do the same thing on the other side, and then I'll start drilling. I forgot I had these little half inch uh, clamps. They're, they're little Clico clamps uh, that are super handy um, for exactly this. This is exactly the kind of thing they're meant for. And so, yeah, put those suckers on there and then drill all you want to match it. And then you can look under here and you can kind of see how this stiffener goes. It's, it's meant to run along the border of this outer piece and then Stiffen, it's a stiffener. So doing that on this side, gonna do it on that side. And then once I get all these holes drilled, I'll keep Clecos in there so we have it all Clecoed up. And that's step four. It's coming together, it'll be done anytime now. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> so while I continue working in the background, I wanna talk a little bit about how I'm gonna be testing my tanks. And it has to do with this little blue anodized um, port that uh, there are several on on your tanks. The problem is I don't have a real good way of closing this off uh, for doing the testing. Um, I've tried different things, balloons and little gaskets and whatnot, and it's just, they're pesky. They're tough to seal. Um, and so what I had theorized I was gonna do was to take just a, a little scrap piece of that tube, flare it out, put it on here using the, the nut, and then crimp this end and seal this end either just through injecting some pro seal or something in here to just kind of put a little cap on a little 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 seal and then it will actually test in a real world situation i mean that's exactly what's going to happen there's going to be this on here so that i think is a good way to test it i'm going to do that here shortly to get there though i had to get one of these so this is a flanging tool um, you will need one of these for when you are working on exactly this sort of stuff you're not going to need to use it a lot, <clears throat> the tank's gonna need it in three or four places and um, maybe the brake system, I'm not sure. There's, I mean, there's a few places you're gonna need it, but there's not that many. The unfortunate thing is, is you have to get one specifically designed for aviation. Um, they come in two parts and I'll put some pictures in the background, but basically there's uh, this one piece, which is the part that does the work and the angle on this head here is very important. It is 37 degrees. That angle matches the angle of all of your anodized parts uh, perfectly. If you go to an auto parts store, you can actually get one of these fairly inexpensively, but the degrees are wrong. I think those are 45 degrees, um, or maybe it's four, no, I think it's 45. I, I don't know why they're different. Like, I'm not sure why aviation has gone to 37 as opposed to 45 and or why automotive is 45. I have no idea. But for whatever reason, they're different, of course. Um, and so you're gonna have to get one of these. They cost about a hundred bucks or maybe more uh, at Aircraft Spoos or some of the other places. And that's just how it is. You're just gonna have to buy it. Like I said, comes in two parts. The main tool, the the, the holder, this holds whatever workpiece. And, and you can see here that there's a number of different sizes uh, from as small as 3 16ths all the way up to as big as 5 eighths, which is handy. 5 eighths, good grief. Um, so yeah. When it comes to flanging out the aluminum or flaring out, I'm not sure the right term, uh, this works great. It, it's real simple. You, you could actually overdo it where you're smushing the uh, metal, which you don't want to do, so you just want to change the shape slightly. But anyways, so that's, that's what this is. That's one of the things I've been waiting for. It's finally here. Uh, so with that, I'm going to continue working on uh, the tank as well as continuing to work on the fuselage because you know what? I'm actually having fun with the fuselage again. Okay, I never thought that guy would shut up. Um, so here's the deal. Um, we're still on the first page and it says on step five that these two angle stiffeners that we've created, uh, basically it says take, pull them off, deburr them, and then prime the stiffener angles. They, they're specifically saying to prime them. That's interesting. Normally it's kind of, if you want to prime, go ahead and prime. If you don't want to prime, don't prime. Uh, but I 
I'm going to guess this time it's because of being against an anodized part versus this is not anodized, so maybe there's corrosion that could happen? I don't know. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get out my rattle can spray paint, prime these guys up, you know, put a little, put a little scuff on them, prime them up, and go from there. All right, guys, and with that, I'm going to cut this one short. I'm going to stop this one because primarily I want to find out from you if this is the kind of format you guys want, more of a conversation with the camera. And also, I'm going to do maybe a little less of the overlay. I still like the overlay. I think it's still a good tool, but maybe I was overusing it a little bit. So with that, if you'd comment down below, tell me what you think. I'd really appreciate it. Um, if you click that like button over there, it'll let me know you like what I'm doing on this video. If you click the don't like on this one or the thumbs down on this one, that'll at least give me the feedback I need if you don't feel like commenting down below or giving advice. Uh, with that though, if you do want to support this project, if you jump over my Patreon page for as little as a dollar a month, you guys can help support me. Think of it as buying me a cup of coffee over the internet. I very much appreciate it. I get uh, contacts from people all the time wanting to come out here personally and uh, buy me a cup of coffee in real life. Awesome. Come on out. Um, it's interesting though, the number one question I get is whether or not they can do this. And the simple fact of the matter is, guys, I'm an idiot. And if I can build this plane, you absolutely can. Anybody can. Um, Vans does a really good job of making this pretty monkey simple. So uh, with that, if you do want to dis uh, order a kit, if you or when you do order your kit, if you use my builder's number uh, as a reference when you order your kit, Vans will send me 100 bucks. It's no money out of your pocket. And it's just another way you can help support this project. So anyways, guys, thanks so much. I'm going to get back to it, uh, and like I said, if you hate this, tell me so I can go back to the way I was doing it. Thanks.